Today's sponsor is Maximum Settings, a cloud-based gaming service where you won't need to spend thousands of dollars to upgrade your PC or a personal nuclear plant to boot up your system. Just do it! And for as low as 9.95 Canadian dollars a month, you can play the most recent games on your computer, even if your hardware isn't prepared. And if you don't play that much, well, you can just use the hourly system for as little as 0.35 Canadian dollars. Sign up today for your full Linux gaming PC with no resource sharing and start enjoying high-level gaming on any PC. Hello guys, it's Shit Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. As for today's video, we have the how to overclock the RTX 4070. Although this is mostly an overclocking video, I will also briefly show you how to undervolt the RTX 4070, okay? Although it is kind of tricky with MS Afterburner, uh, it can be done uh, and overall can bring you some benefits. But for the simple version, RTX 4070 overclock it is for better performance. And if you just ended up here and you were actually searching for any other video, I have lots of these types of videos like uh, the overclocking guys for the RTX 3060, 3050, 3070, even the 4070Ti oh, for example. I have also lots of them on the AMD side with the RX 5500 XT, 5600 XT, 6600, 7800, okay. 7950 XT or even the 7000 series like the 7900 XTX, okay? So I have lots of those if you want check them out on my video section. And before actually going to the actual overclocking video, Let's go to the common questions. Common questions. The first common question is, will this void my warranty? No. First of all, because brands can't actually prove that you overclocked. It is done software side that so you can just raise the, the maximum clocks here, for example, with MS Afterburner, as we will do. Um, but as soon as you as you want, you can just disable those same overclocks as well. Brands just can prove them that, that you overclocked. It won't void your warranty by any means, so don't worry about that. And the second point is also related to the first one and is, will this break my GPU? No, because once again, this is software sided and the max that can happen is for your computer to crash. Okay, you're trying overclocking settings, your computer will crash, it will reboot, then after you uh, boot, it, boot up into Windows once again, you can simply go to MS Afterburner as well and tweak your settings, okay? All the recent hardware uh, have kind of some protections that will, that will uh, avoid any kind of hardware issues by software overclocking, okay? So you're completely fine. No, this won't break your GPU. And the only thing that can actually break your GPU is if you have a time bomb instead of a power supply. Besides that, the GPU just won't break because of overclocking. It may break because you have a bad PSU, a bad power supply, and it may break because that PSU will break or at least will cause, uh, will send a lot of voltage or a lot more amperes than it should to the GPU and then it might break the GPU. But once again, only if your PSU sucks. If you have at least a decent PSU, you have nothing to worry about. And the third and final question is, will this reduce the lifespan of my GPU? And once again, no. no. We are overclocking, but we are not increasing the voltage. If we were incre increasing the voltage over the stock voltage, I would say that it might indeed reduce your GPU's lifespan. But this is not the case. We are actually maintaining the voltage, just increasing the frequencies. Meaning that if the voltage is the same, it is prepared from factory to have that load 24 seven without any issues for years and years. So you're perfectly fine. Now, as for the actual overclocking guide, well, you can use several software kits, like for example, the one from NVIDIA, GeForce Experience, which sucks. Sorry, NVIDIA, by the way, or not, I'm not really sorry. Uh, you can use, for example, the Asus Tweak, you can use Gigabytes feature, you can use uh, the old EVGAs, features like well, software features, but MS Afterburner is just much better overall. And that's the one we're gonna use. You just go to Google, you search for MS Afterburner, bam, you go to the MS Afterburner website, you download the MS Afterburner and you install it. As simple as it can be. As soon as you run it, you will end up with this, okay, with the software. So you have the voltage, the clocks and the fan options. 
uh, on the top you have the GPU, the GPU frequency, the memory frequency, the voltage and the temperature, okay? The curve editor is mostly to, to people that want to undervolt the GPU, okay? It is, it is harder to use, as you can see, you have lots of options here, lots of, of frequencies for, the, for a certain type of voltage and so on, but overall, uh, this is the one that you're gonna use and it's much, much simpler. Now, one of the most important things on overclocking is the power limit. Sadly, the model that I actually have has only a power limit of 100% and I can't actually increase. This is the first car that I see that I can't increase the power limit. The usual cards that I have can increase the power limit at least by 5%, some by 10%, and the higher end models can increase the power limit by up to 50%. That means that if the card needs more power to perform better, so if the card needs more power to increase the clock frequencies in order to perform better, well, raising the power limit alone would increase the performance in theory and most likely practically. But uh, some models like this one on lower end cards, like not that the 4070 is a lower end card, but on lower end cooling solutions like this one from MSI, uh, it seems that the power limit is locked and we can't go over 100%. So to begin with, the overclocking uh, is a bit limited, but we can still do it and it will perform better than the stock settings. Just go there and put it to the max that you can, okay? That's how it works and that's how it should be. The same for the temperature limit in order to overclock and get the maximum performance you can get out of your GPU. Now, as for the core voltage, I wouldn't mess with the core voltage much because like I said, if you don't want to decrease your GPU lifespan, I don't advise you to mess with the core voltage. Firstly, because the power limit that we have is 100%, so if we increase the voltage, it means that inside the same power limit of 200 watts, the core, the, the core clocks will be lower because if you have more voltage for the same clocks, you'll, you'll have higher power draw. And since you have a power draw lock, the clocks will need to be lower in order to, to, to still be inside the 200 watts power, power limit. So that's what it is. As for the core clock, I found that 150, 150 uh, megahertz on the core is what you want, okay? Most GPUs or at least any GPU on this side, any 4070, will do at least plus 100 megahertz on core, at least. And you can start with 100 megahertz, then go to let's say 120, bam, then try 130, bam, 140, 150, and even if 150 is stable for you, so if you try these in some games, if you try plus 150 megahertz on core clock, in some heavy games like let's say Hogwarts Legacy, like for example uh, Control, like for example really heavy games uh, that push your GPU to, to its max, then if it is stable, if it doesn't crash for let's say 30 minutes, then you can try once again 160. If 160 doesn't crash as well for let's say 30 or uh, 40 minutes without having VSync activated or frame lock activated, of course, then once again, try 170. If 170 is stable, once again, increase the values and test again. That's how you have to do it. But from what I found, 150 seems to be the best middle ground in terms of performance. As for the memory clock, since we now know the core clock, the memory clock, I found that some 4000 series cards can do more than others. For example, on the 4080, I believe that I can do plus 1500, yes, plus 1500. On the 4070 Ti, I could do 2000, but once again, this is a low end 4070, so the pinning should be worse compared to the high tier ones. Meaning that if you have a better, let's say a better cooler, a better model of the 4070, you will most likely be able to overclock further. I can overclock up to 1000 megahertz on the, on the VRAM, so from, uh, 10,500 to 11,500 megahertz on the VRAM. You can do worse or you can do better depending on the, on the model that you have, depending on the binning. You can buy, because all cards are different, you can buy 40, 50 cards, all 4070s from the same model and some cards will overclock more and some cards overclock less. But 
uh, the values that I'm actually giving you are the values that will work on, let's say, over 90% of the cards. You might be unlucky and your card may, may do less than this, so it may only do, let's say, 100 megahertz on core and 500 megahertz on memory, but I'm pretty sure that these values will serve you as well. And if you're lucky, if you're, if you're binning, if you're binning luck draw is better, uh, you may be able to overclock further on the core and much, much further on the memory. Uh, I tried 1500, but it wasn't 100% stable, uh, so I kept it at, sorry, I kept it at 1000. So these are the values that you should start on the memory clock. You can start, for example, with 500 megahertz, test it once again, 30, 40 minutes in gaming, in a really heavy game. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is one of the best games to test VRAM. If your VRAM is unstable, the game won't even start, okay? The game just will just crash to the desktop, uh, sometimes, without an, sometimes without any kind of message. It will, simple, it will simply crash, and that's because the, the VRAM is not stable. So try at 500. If it is stable for 30, 40 minutes, Go, for example, to 800. If 800 is still stable after 30, 40 minutes of gameplay, mostly on Assassin's Creed Valhalla, then try, then try, sorry, 1000. I'm, I'm really, uh, really tired, Jesus. Uh, so try 1000, once again, bam. If 1000 is stable, once again, 1200, for example. If 1200 is stable, 1500, and so on, so on, so on, till, till you reach the maximum number that you can get your CPU, your GPU stable. So you need to keep raising the, the value step by step till you reach your maximum stability options. So imagine that you select, for example, 1500, and 1500 isn't perfectly stable. Try 1400, bam. If 1400 isn't 100% stable once again, decrease a bit more, 1300. And if even if 1300 is, is stable in most games, but you find that game that where it isn't stable, it means that it isn't 100% stable, so go back to 1200. Till you find your stable point for all games at all times uh, in any situation, okay? That's basically it. And as for the curve editor, well, you can just go here. If you want, for example, to decrease the voltage on your maximum frequency, here you have the frequencies on the left, um, so on the Y axis, and on the X axis you have the voltage. For example, the max voltage that we have is 1250 millivolts. So basically from what I understood of some tutorials that I saw online, because I don't really undervolt using MS Afterburner, I think that they should improve this a lot. We should be able to at least have an option where we could introduce the, the voltage values just simply as we do on the, Radian, on the Radian software. You just go there, introduce the value that you want. At least two options, this and the other one. Anyway, the only thing that you have to do to undervolt is to go here, for example, and decrease the frequency at a certain voltage, okay? Although it shouldn't be actually like that, because if we think about it, uh, it should be the um, it should be actually the x axis going to the left, because we should be able to push this to the left, because it meant that at the same frequency we would have lower voltage, but. That's not how it works somehow. You need to decrease here uh, on the maximum on the on the maximum voltage and maximum frequency. You need to decrease it, uh, let's say to minus two, minus twenty, uh, minus fifty, and so on. And that's supposedly how the undervolting works here. Um, it means that. I don't know what it means actually, I don't know why this works like this, but according to some tutorials at least, that's how it works. I still advise you to go to YouTube, to go to several other websites and search for an undervolting tutorial for the MS Afterburner because this is just a small insight and a really, really um, short, short version of it because I don't really know much about it and I won't teach you what I what I don't actually know. So basically that's it. And well guys, that's all for today's video. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video if you found it useful or if you find it useful. Um, and on the end of the video, we'll have the usual stock versus overclock and I'll try to include also uh, an option with lower power limit to see the performance drop and the temperatures and so on or maybe try to include uh, an undervolting option. You can see the differences in between the stock, OC and so on in terms of performance, power draw, temperatures, clocks and so on. Once again, thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next video.
Hope this helped.